Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, sports, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Ramoliotis, and on social media, you know me as PD Beast. My guest acts, but is also a blogger and a digital creator. We're with Lisa Wilson. Lisa, welcome to Pop Turnative. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you. Does it happen sometimes where people maybe call you Lessa? <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> I feel, I don't know, I feel like I've seen Lisa spelt like that before, so I kind of, like I double checked, but I kind of, right. I knew it was Lisa. But uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm really excited to, to chat with you. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, I find it interesting because, um, and this is the first time I'm going to ask you, this is my hallmark question. I kind of, I want to ask you when you decide to be a storyteller because I find like actors and writers and creators are all like storytellers, but I want to kind of know um, like part A about like the acting stuff and then part B about like the stuff in the digital sphere, like the digital creation and the blocking. Sure. So when did you decide you want to be a storyteller in those regards? I was eight years old and um, my dad took me to see The Little Mermaid and I fell in love with Ariel. And at that point, I decided I wanted to do voiceover and be a cartoon voice. I had no idea what that meant at that stage in my life, but you know, like that was, that was the beginning of it for me. And I had this great love of stories anyway. I was a bookworm, so I would just be lost. I would hide in like a tree house or in the backseat of my parents' car and I would just read all day long. So. Yeah. The love of stories has been with me pretty much my entire life. Um, I knew I wanted to get into entertainment. And so I started pursuing that when I was a teenager. I was like 15-ish and I started doing modeling work. And then it just kind of progressed. And now I've worked in every aspect of the in uh, industry. And I feel like for me, it wasn't like... Um, like the typical path where I knew that I wanted to be an actor per se. 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just knew that I wanted to be in the arts. So yeah. I found my way to acting via all of these other paths. And um, it really is like my greatest love of all of the different things that we can do in the business. You wear many hats. How important is it to wear many hats in the entertainment and digital industry? It's extremely important and um, exhaustively important. You have to do a little bit of everything. And that's part of the reason that I learned how to do everything with the content creation side of things. Yeah. I, you know, I, I went to school for web development and graphic design. So I started out um, whenever, I guess it was like 10 years ago, I went back to school after already starting my career in entertainment and got those skills. And then I worked as a project manager for um, a, you know, a marketing firm and then went out on my own and did my own stuff while I was still growing my work as an actor. And then a couple of years ago, acting work got built up so much that it overtook and it became my primary. Well, no, I respect the hustle because I, I got a master's in communications. Um, and, uh, you know, that that's kind of the field that kind of started in. And, you know, a lot of the conversations early on on Poptternative were a lot like about like the big, that's why when I say my intro, I'm like diving in the worlds of like pop culture, TV, film, sports, social media. It's because it, there was like a bit like a, a, a focus of social media more when it started than now. Yeah. I still ask about it, but it's more about like what show are you on now? Let's talk about <laughs> it. You know right. what I mean? But right. but like your point about many hats about how it's exhaustingly important is is key too because but I feel like it's also important. Like there's gonna be some things that like. It's not going to be glamorous or comfortable, but like you need to kind of like get your feet wet and try things and get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I completely agree. There's nothing comfortable about doing all of the things, mm -hmm. you know, like because there's nothing. I tell my friends this all the time. There is nothing I would love more than to just focus on telling stories yeah. and not have to think about the technical side of how I'm promoting myself and the branding and, you know, all of these other side jobs that I can do. And, you know, I have a big presence in the hosting world too. And I take a lot of hosting jobs and that was something that I just naturally excelled at. So hallelujah, it became the thing that ultimately like paid my bills and paved the way for me to really pursue acting. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a lot and nothing would be greater than to just like book a series regular and stay on that path and be working as a storyteller full time. 
Well, I really admire the hustle, like I said. Um, we're, we're excited to chat now because, you know, Stargirl just dropped. Yes! And you were in that show, which is awesome. I am, yeah. I, I um, start showing up in episode two. And then you'll see me later in the season in five, seven, and eight. And I am um, a character named Bobby Berman. And I am Cindy's stepmom, who is also Shiv. And she's the, you know, lead supervillain. So it's it's a pretty interesting dynamic, our mother-daughter relationship. And uh, you will feel sorry for me a lot. <laughs> it's incredible to see the amount of comic book superhero content out there and it feels like there's there's no stopping it you know what i mean it, it seems it seems like it's gonna continue coming and coming there's always these shows because i don't like i i used to read the comic books and like there could be like an episode up like there could be like an article like um a segment in a comic book about like a superhero and like a villain is brought up like one time and never heard again but these right. days they could take that and adapt that to a show if they wanted to yeah yeah it's pretty amazing you know uh, my first foray into the dc universe was on doom patrol i don't know if you knew that but oh, i played yep. a, a superhero on doom patrol raya jones and you know it's it's these old comic books that nobody had really heard of until the show became a thing unless you were like in the comic book world and then there's like a small cult following but then it just blew up and became a much larger thing what's the status on doom patrol is that coming back i believe they are okay, I, I, mean, I love I was, that first season it was awesome it was phenomenal they, i know they have season two so there's definitely a second season um i'm i'm assuming they're gonna i, I think they're done shooting season two don't yeah quit me. i'm i'm okay but i just i found like that one though it was like funny it was really funny. Like, it's a lot of dark I, humor. Yeah, but there's a lot, like, you know, I really like The Flash, and, you know, there's some moments in it where you laugh a little bit, and there's some yeah. goofiness, but, like, I, like Doom Patrol like, was, like, <laughs> re, like actually hilarious, like, really funny. Oh, it's so funny. Like, some of it's dirty comedy, and you're like, <laughs> should I feel bad about myself right now for watching this and laughing? <laughs> there, there's a scene, I don't want to go into detail about it that much, but there's a scene that was like, that went viral on social media that they kept seeing. I don't know if, what scene you're talking about, uh, if you know what I'm talking I'm about. Not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Possibly. I've probably seen it. I haven't seen all of the episodes though. But like, it was one of those things where, yeah, no, there, there's, there's some, there's some wacky stuff in that for sure. Yeah. Um, I feel like shows are not afraid to kind of push the envelope a little bit these days. Like obviously CW has kind of a formula, but it's really cool to see like, different takes like like i watched start like like star girl right like the first episode i mean like it doesn't feel like you're a typical like cw show a little bit it feel it feels like a, a whole like like its own thing you know what i mean and not that there's anything wrong with that but a lot of the shows like arrow and flash there's a lot of crossovers and and if they feel similar and it becomes one of those things unfortunately where like if you don't like one of the shows then you might not like the others because they feel the same star girl i feel like is a lot different you know what i mean well, Stargirl is actually, originally was meant to be just on DC Universe. So the CW came later. We found out, um, I believe it was at the wrap party that the CW was picking it up. So we'd already shot the entire first season and then they were working on that deal. But if you're watching on the DC Universe, you actually get a longer episode. So there are some scenes that get cut out for, for the CW to fit the format for that that hour long yes. window um, with the commercial breaks. So yeah. You might you you must think that whole world is so interesting right now with your like blogging background as well, like the streaming services. Like it that's such an interesting world right now. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, as an actor, it's opened up a lot of opportunities for different types of um, characters to to be written in different shows, to be put on television that wouldn't necessarily get their shot if they were on network TV. And for us, like in, in the acting world, it gives non-A-listers, non-named actors a chance to become somebody, you know? Mm -hmm. So we get these opportunities that we, we wouldn't have had if there wasn't a streaming situation. So it's really interesting, really, really interesting. And I'm, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen with it in the next couple of years. For sure. What would, what did, what would you say is kind of like, your favorite thing about acting and storytelling and what is the most difficult thing about acting and storytelling lisa um my favorite thing about it is that it it just gives you an opportunity to put yourself aside yeah. and fall into the life of another person and actually 
be empathetic for their scenario and and um, not judge another person. It's like as an actor, you can't ever judge the character. You know, you no. personally maybe wouldn't do the things that this character would do. So you have to completely put yourself and your opinions aside. Um, so I, that's probably my favorite thing is just being able to like lose myself. The hardest thing is the inconsistency because it's like, like we were talking about the hustle a little while ago. It is such a hustle that you just, you really just don't stop working ever, you know? And it, you find it hard sometimes to even take a vacation because what if I go on a vacation and then I get the audition of a lifetime and I don't have my equipment or I don't have a proper reader or I don't have a wall that's solid that I can tape on and won't be distracting, you know? So it's those sorts of things that make it hard. But I also feel like a lot of actors have a lot of like, every actor has a different life in the sense of depending on like what they book and when they kind of shoot the certain things. Cause I find like, you know, I've talked to some of my friends in the industry, like they'll go, they'll book things and they'll work for like five months straight mm -hmm. and then they won't work for like six months. Yeah. Or longer. Like I, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's really, really crazy. Um, you know, we're thankful for residuals because yeah. <laughs> they, they'll carry you through. Um, or, you know, someone like myself where I have car dealership commercials that I do, I do, um, I have five dealerships that I do all the commercials for, and I've had those going on for a number of years. So that's why earlier when I said the hosting has really like paved the way for me to pursue acting, it freed me up a lot of having to do a lot of different things and allowed me to focus more. And I really do believe that once I took that financial equation out of the way, it opened me up to be more creative and more honest in my storytelling work. Absolutely. You're a digital creator. Are you on TikTok at all? I am, but I haven't gotten into it. Like, so you're you on TikTok, but you're not on TikTok. I, I'm a, okay. So I am a voyeur. I just like to watch Me all too. the TikToks, and it, like I think about the dances, and I've tried to learn a couple of dances. You know that Savage Dance. I I I spent a couple of hours in my office here at home and put, put a little tutorial up on YouTube and I, I learned it, but I was just like, I feel like an, a nut job doing this dance. I just, I should watch the videos. I definitely shouldn't do that. I dance. watched it. it. It's one of those things though. Like I was a bit like, so the thing I like the, the funny videos on TikTok rather than the dancing because I was a big Vine fan. Oh yeah. And there was no dancing on Vine. Like <laughs> nothing. And then all of a sudden it's both because there's still some really funny videos that show up on TikTok. Sure, yeah. Um, I, I yeah, I'm like I'm the same way. I just kind of scroll through it. Um it's crazy to see how that's kind of growing and literally like everyone it just I don't know like what do you think of like of, of these fads? I mean like and these trends that Especially like now in like the quarantine era, like I feel like people people are referring to it to that right because even though we go we get back to our normal lives soon, it's gonna be like a progression, right? We're not gonna go back like right away type thing. <laughs> so yeah. content I feel like is is being kind of consumed a lot differently in terms of the amount because it just seems like everyone is just always on TikTok, everyone's always on Netflix. Like it's interesting to see. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see what happens with that, too. I personally haven't leaned into TikTok because I just don't feel like it's my platform. You know, like what I would say to people if they're creating content is choose the platforms that are right for you and right for your audience and like your brand and what you're trying to put out there and stick to it. There's always going to be um, fads that come up like new social medias. I mean, I don't know if you remember Periscope. Remember that that live video? Oh, yeah, I used it. Yeah. Right. I like I was on it. I was so excited about this live video thing and um and then it just died as quickly as it arrived. So that's yeah. the thing that I think is a bit concerning. And you know, in marketing it's like they always talk about how your email list is is literally your lifeblood. So you don't own any of the content that you're or any of the audience, like any of the following that is on any of these social media platforms. So it's a little bit dangerous just to fully rely on that. So you know, it's got, you have to kind of cultivate people that want to connect with you yeah. off of social media. hundred percent. Oh man. The, the Periscope thing reminds me of, I remember. So when, so do you remember? So when Spotify came out, there was also audio that came out. I don't know if you remember that. I don't remember that one. So there was, so it was literally like both these two, they were the same thing. Like okay. they were the exact same thing. They looked a lot different, but they were like music streaming websites, sure, right? Yeah. Um, and then there was kind of like, I had different friends, like people were choosing between the two, like 
people were either getting Spotify or audio. People weren't getting I like both, right? Yeah. So I got Spotify, and then some of my friends got audio, and I don't think audio like exists anymore. I don't think so either. Pandora is was huge. That was the other one. That's the one that I had and spent a lot of time on before. So Spotify. maybe Pandora is audio then, or maybe. No. They were- I thought they were around before Spotify. I don't know. We'd have to do our homework on that. Pandora was around for a while. Yeah. I, they're still around, too. Yeah. I just, I look at what Spotify, like, I, I had no, it was cool, because I'm from Canada, and I remember um, there was a band, Shout Out to Courage My Love. They sent me a promo code so I could be, like, one of the first people, like, in Canada to use it. Like, you only, okay. you, you were only able to use Spotify in Canada <laughs> if you had a code. Sure. And they gave me that code. So I had Spotify, like, five months before it actually came out in Canada. Wow, that's great. And I love, like, I fell in love with Spotify, like, yeah. as soon as I got it. Like, I, someone asked me recently if you had to delete every app and keep one app, right? We went around, like, a Zoom call, and everyone was saying Instagram. I said Spotify. I keep Spotify. Yeah, I, it would be hard for me to get rid of Spotify because I listen to it all the time. Me too. It's always in my car. I'm not on Instagram all the time. I mean, I'm on it every day for the most part, unless I'm doing a social media fast. But that's yeah. usually only like over a weekend. Um, but yeah, I'm on Spotify, Spotify all the time. Hard to give up. Ooh. For sure, it would. And especially with like the podcast you can listen to on it now. Yeah. I know <laughs> it's, yeah. it's crazy. I'm sorry. I don't want to bring up that, 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 that reality where we have to choose one okay. social media. <laughs> Thank God it's a, it's a false reality. And we yeah. don't have to choose because that no. choice would be so hard. It would be difficult for sure. Um, no, it's, it's, it's crazy. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was really yeah. awesome to chat with you. Thank, you. thank you for having me. This is fun. Absolutely. So where can people follow you on social media? And they can obviously watch Stargirl on DC Universe and on the CW, right? Yes, yes. So on social media, I am on Instagram and on Twitter at Hello Lisa, and that's L-E-S-A. Yeah. <laughs> Lessa. No. Lisa. <laughs> And then I have a Facebook page, but it's not like, I don't really do anything on it. And I think maybe like seven people like it, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to have, I listen, I used to have a, um, a Facebook page. that so was like a Facebook fan page and it had like 4,500 people on it. But after the algorithms changed and it was so difficult to get content out, I just chose not to waste my time there anymore. So yeah only reason that i have a facebook fan page fan page i say that in air quotes because it's not really that um is because instagram kind of demands it for me to be able to use the features on the business side for that Mm -hmm. so yeah that's it it's there you can go look at it if you want but you're gonna be bored absolutely and uh they watch star girl right Yes, watch Stargirl. You can catch that on the DC Universe or on uh, St- the CW. And um, I'm excited about it. It's so good. It's such a good show. Such a good show. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turner, <laughs> YouTube.com slash Pop Turner. For previous episodes, be sure to catch Lisa Wilson in Stargirl. That can be watched on the DC Universe and on the CW. And until next time, this is Lisa Wilson and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.